Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. We are going big in this video. We are going absolutely huge. This is the biggest resin pot I've ever made and it is all inspired by a couple of videos back where I put some resin and some flowers and the foils and all of the autumn colors into those pumpkins and they came out absolutely stunning. This is the giant plant pot mold that you would have seen on my video about a year to two years ago. I've only ever used it for Jesmini and this is the very first time I'm using it with resin. Now this is linked down below in my Amazon storefront under molds that I've used. It is huge guys. It has an actual plastic housing for it, a whole supportive casing because it is so big. It comes with this squishy silicon insert and then of course it has this plastic inner that keeps it all together when you pour everything in there and it does have some bolts on the side to make it easier to open and close because of course once this is full up it is quite big and bulky and heavy so being able to take the casing apart is so much easier to demold after now here's the thing it is matte it is a matte mold so we are gonna get some seriously different results when we use epoxy resin in this because it's not gonna be shiny and I was so excited to see the results now of course I'm using my go-to absolute best purchase this autumn the flowers that I got from Amazon now I'm gonna be using these gilding flakes I did find out where they're from and they are from the range here in the UK that was a shock. I didn't even know the range had such cool things like that. I'm also toying with the idea of using the glitters that Yvonne sent me from Resin Supplies Den. Everything is going to be linked down below, but I did end up, I'm sorry Yvonne, I did end up not using the glitters in this specific project. The colours I'm using are all of the autumn yumminess, the browns, the golds, the oranges, the creams and the fudge kind of colours. Now the resin I'm using is the Apex. This is not necessarily designed for deep pours. This is not the Apex deep pour. This is the Apex one-to-one -one by volume, perfect for coasters. And I figured we'll have a play because the other pieces came out so beautifully. I really wanted to push this resin to the limits and just see, well, it's a bit of a risk, but just see what would happen if we use this resin in such a huge pour. Now I'm going to be using these calibrated cups. You would have seen it on the screen back five minutes, five seconds ago. Um, these massive calibrated cups are from Glass Cast. Now Glass Cast is a resin I used way back. It is a stunning resin but their website does have lots of accessories and tools and all of the cups you could possibly need. These huge calibrated cups are perfect for much larger pours if you want a much bigger volume of that resin. Now, I know, I know I'm using exactly the same colors that I've used throughout. I could explore more, maybe with some more golds and coppers, but these colors right now are just giving me all of the autumn feels. If you've missed the last few autumn videos, go check them out. I'm using orange mica powder with a hint of brown to just get rid of some of that stark in your face orange. I want it a bit more rusty orange. Then I'm using completely brown, neat, chocolate colored mica powder. But into that, I'm gonna put some more of that copper super sparkle. It is absolutely beautiful. It just gives everything the most stunning copper sparkle and a richness, a real depth and a richness to the color. You can of course add this sparkle into all of your colors if you want, but I did just add it into the brown. Into the next pot is going these gilding flakes. Now, again, these are from the range. They are called autumn flakes and they are beautiful absolutely beautiful i'll be honest when i first saw them it was the blue now blue is my favorite color but it was the blue that i thought mm, that doesn't belong in there but it really kind of does it works so so well now to start with it's similar to the previous videos that you have seen i've taken the inside out of this mold i don't need that in there right now i need to be able to get my flowers in and down and around that inside lip. So I need to be able to squish the inner. 
So all you see me doing here is doing exactly that. I'm, I'm maneuvering the inside of this mold to be able to place these gorgeous dried flowers from Amazon, again, linked below, in, down, inside. So similar to the previous video, I want flowers at the top all around my mold. I want to be able to see some flowers. Now, I wasn't even sure when I did that video if we would see flowers, if if I would maybe hide them, if the, if the resin would take over and somehow hide the fact that we even put flowers in there. But because it worked so, so beautifully, I really wanted to try it on a massive scale. Now, this is the biggest mold I have. And I thought, you know what? We might as well go for it because if I do this and it works a dream, then hey, if it doesn't work, I'm still gonna share the video. I'm gonna share everything with you guys, the successes and the lessons that we've learned along the way. So this is what it's looking like so far. You can just see here that I've pushed the flowers down and in. Once I let go of that inner, it kind of pushes them back in place. So don't worry if you have things that are a tad big, you can really get them down in there. Because once the support is back and the inside has been put back in, those flowers are not moving. They're not gonna distort your mold in any way, shape or form. So if you are doing this project and you do something similar to this inspired by this video, then please do tag me on social media with the hashtag Claire made me do it because I do love to see what you guys make after watching my videos. I am here for everyone to make what I make. It would be great to see. I am putting a lot in here, guys. I am putting a lot. How much you put is entirely up to you, of course. But I decided we're going big. Might as well go big or go home. And I am packing tons down the sides here. I figured, hey, what's the worst that could happen? At least we might see some flowers. And if we see them all, then winner, winner, <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner, as they say. Once that is all done, I'm going to leave the support off. I've taken the casing off. The inside is still not in there because once I pour the first layer of resin down in, I really want to be able to pick the mold up and give those edges a squish. Now, I'm not I'm not squishing too violently because, again, I don't want to damage the flowers that are in there. I don't really want to bruise them up, but I tend to do that a lot when I put flowers in resin. I just want to make sure that the clear layer that we're laying down first has really, really got down in and around that inside 90 degree lip, which, of course, will be the top of the pot. So we really want that to be as neat as possible with a minimal air bubbles. Now I'm putting it all back together. I've put it back in its housing and now I've put the inside support plastic back inside. Now this mold is as solid as a rock. We can now fill it up. At this point, I have all of my colors mixed. I have this gorgeous orangey brown. I have the cream the brown and the foils all in their individual tubs. I also have a little bit of clear left over if I feel like I need to wash <laughs> to wash the colors down a little bit. What I did do just before it was time to pour everything in, I just gave the mold itself a bit of a sprinkle with that copper sparkle. Now, do keep in mind this mold is matte. I am expecting a matte finish. I am not expecting all of these sparkly yummies to come through because it's a matte mold. So if you are new to resin, just know that matte molds will produce a matte finish and shiny molds will produce a shiny finish unless you dust them first with mica powder, in which case they will be matte. <laughs> so similar to the previous video, no rhyme or reason, no order, no plan. The only plan I have here, get the colors in. It doesn't matter in which order you put the colors in, just get them in and just help them to merge together, mingle together. You could of course put them in a split cup if you really wanted to, but I had no interest. Split cups kind of scare me. Like, how do you guys clean them? If anyone here has got a split cup, can you please tell me how you actually clean them? Because honestly, even normal silicon cups are a struggle for me. Now, I never planned to use any of Yvonne's glitters, but I did in the end kind of just sprinkle a little bit on top. But 
honestly it made very little difference but I did decide not to use the leaf glitters I also didn't want them kind of sinking right to the bottom or floating to the point where they got lost and then I just feel like that would be a bit of a waste I don't have much left so I, I yeah I just decided not to really go for it with the glitters once I had poured all of my resin in I just gave it a little bit of a stir and you would have seen me there I got my stick and I shoved it down the sides why I don't know it was just one of those things I thought if I put my stick down the side it might help all of those beautiful colors interact with each other blend out and yeah who knows right who knows what results we're gonna get the beautiful thing about something like this is it is literally like Christmas you never know what you're gonna get I just did a bit of a swirl on the top and then realized I still I still needed to make more resin this was not enough resin I made so much resin and it wasn't enough so I did end up making a real small pot of goldy brown and I just added that on the top to bring it up to the top of the mold as close as possible trust me when I say I could have made even more I had a good one to two millimeter gap at the top of this pot but look at this already it is absolutely beautiful I left this for 24 hours and I was so happy I didn't see any exothermic reaction with this resin because it's such a big chunky deep pour I was so worried there'd be some kind of heat explosion but it didn't happen once I've taken the casing out and I've taken the inside out it is time to demold and guys I don't think you're ready I think you might need to pause the video go and get a cup of tea real quick because oh my goodness me now firstly I've never made anything this big with resin and I genuinely it took my breath away it took my breath away I fell head over heels in love with this this reminds me of the fields harvest time the tractors are all out the massive combine harvesters you know digging up all of that wheat and it just screams harvest look at this guys I'm obsessed I sent this over to my patrons my patrons have seen literally my next 10 videos and most of my patrons agreed it reminded them of a frosty one of those super frosty beautiful serene autumn mornings when you go out and everything is just frosty the air is crisp and everything has turned brown that is what this reminded them of because of course it's matte and matte resin gives this absolutely stunning frosted glass appearance I'm obsessed that section there I cannot get enough of it the bottom half of the pot is beautiful in its own way it kind of reminds me of clouds those kind of low clouds especially with that white in there that cream I I <laughs> I've got no words I've got absolutely no words this is by far my favorite autumn project I seem to be saying that quite a lot but as time goes on and I'm evolving <laughs> I just love everything more and more this is what it is looking like I've given it a bit of a cream background so you can see the stunning rich frosted autumn morning colors coming through and I cannot get enough the bottom of the pot also reminds me of like mountains like if you're in the highlands of scotland or there or you're near a huge pine forest like the mist is rolling in over the forest that's what that reminds me of as well this is what it's looking like out in the sunshine just gorgeous i could not have predicted and I mean we, m most of us can't predict what resin's going to turn out like because resin has its own flipping <laughs> personality does what it wants I couldn't have predicted how beautiful this would be I'm over the moon I'm obsessed I'm in love 
and I have absolutely no intentions of sanding it down and giving it a resin top coat. I don't want this to be super reflective, shiny, bright resin. That That is not what I want. I feel like if it didn't turn out nice, if I really wasn't happy with it at all, I might have gone down that step just to see if we could bring it back to life in some way. But I could never have predicted these results and I'm leaving it well and truly alone. I will, of course, you know, make the bottom nice and neat. I will use my deburring tool around the bottom, make sure it's nice. And then maybe I will either put some rubber dots on the bottom or I will put a cork base. But this would make an absolutely stunning plant pot for some kind of earthy autumnal sort of plant or a dried plant, dried flowers of some kind. Just cannot get enough of this I really can't I hope you have loved it as much as me and thank you so so much if you've been with me in the live chat thank you if you've been watching and thank you to everyone who watches in the next futureness <laughs> I will see you all in the next video bye